Launch director. Launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission direct. Three. You have permission two, to launch. We have ignition of the RS 68A main engine. And we have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket. Hawk 1. Executed. And we have indication of spacecraft separation. At Space Launch Complex 37, a Delta IV heavy rocket is fueled and ready to launch the NROL-44 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Good evening and welcome to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. I'm Dylan Rice, a systems test engineer, launch conductor, and the host for this evening's broadcast. Liftoff is set for 8.09 p.m. Eastern Time and the team is not working any issues. A few moments from now. At T minus four minutes, the launch count will enter a planned 10 minute hold. We have two planned holds into today's nine and a half hour launch count. These planned holds give our team additional time to resolve any issues that come up prior to entering the terminal count. At the request of our customer, today's live coverage will conclude following payload bearing jettison scheduled to occur about six and a half minutes after liftoff. In addition to watching our webcast, you can follow live mission progress at ULALaunch.com. Will Ulrich, the 45th Space Wing's launch weather officer, recently briefed the weather conditions here at Cape Canaveral. Here's what we're seeing. The probability of violating launch constraints is a rare 0%. Ground winds are light and variable, and the temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So the weather is within launch commit criteria and looks favorable for our planned T0 at 8.09 p.m. Eastern Time. Today's flight will take an easterly heading away from our launch pad here at Cape Canaveral. Let's take a look at what else we can expect to see. And liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket. At T minus 14 seconds, the ROFIs, which look like sparklers, ignite to burn off excess hydrogen injected into the flame duct. ROFI ignition is followed by ignition of the starboard Delta IV RS-68A engine at T minus seven seconds. Two seconds later, the center and port RS-68A engines ignite, generating more than 2.1 million pounds of total thrust to lift the rocket off the pad. This staggered engine start mitigates the fireball created by the hydrogen burning Delta IV heavy. Shortly after liftoff, Delta IV begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure the vehicle experiences during flight. The Delta IV reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound, at 1 minute 18 seconds. Two seconds later, the rocket experiences maximum dynamic pressure as it travels through Earth's atmosphere. At 3 minutes 56 seconds, the port and starboard booster engines shut down. Two seconds later, the port and starboard boosters are jettisoned. The center booster engine then throttles to full power to maximize performance. Approaching main engine cutoff, Delta IV is traveling at more than 24,753 kilometers, or 15,381 miles per hour, is located 111 kilometers, or 69 miles in altitude, and is 586 kilometers, or 364 miles downrange. At 5 minutes, 36 seconds, propellant levels deplete and the booster engine shuts down. Seven seconds later, the Delta IV separation system activates to release the first stage. The vehicle now weighs a little more than 5% of what it did at liftoff. At 5 minutes 56 seconds, the Delta cryogenic second stage main engine burn begins. During ascent, NROL-44 is protected inside a 5-meter diameter tri-sector payload fairing. At approximately 6 minutes 38 seconds, the payload fairing is jettisoned. Delta IV continues its national security mission following payload fairing jettison. ULA is using the Delta IV Heavy configuration to launch the NROL-44 mission. This is the 12th Delta IV Heavy launch and ULA's 142nd mission. Built in Decatur, Alabama, Delta IV Heavy is our largest, most powerful configuration. It's comprised of three common booster cores, each powered by Aerojet Rocketdyne RS-68A engines, and a Delta Cryogenic second stage powered by an Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10V2 engine. Atop the rocket is a 5-meter diameter payload fairing. Launch processing events, including transporting the Delta IV Heavy from the horizontal integration facility to the mobile service tower at Slick 37, 
and lifting it to the vertical position using our large fixed pad erector that you can see here. Next, the spacecraft encapsulated inside that five meter payload fairing is vertically integrated to the Delta IV heavy rocket. At approximately 10.30 a.m. this morning, the MST was rolled back to its park position. At 100 feet wide by 100 feet long by 300 feet tall, the mobile service tower is as tall as a football field is long, as wide as the length of a basketball court, and weighs about 10 million pounds. Here you can see the rotating platforms swung out in preparation for the roll to park position. The MST utilizes a carriage transporter system. It travels about a quarter mile per hour, and at that speed it takes about 25 minutes to roll the MST to its launch position 345 feet north of the launch vehicle. It's equipped with 40 hydraulic cylinders at pressures nearing 3,500 PSI to raise the MST 8 inches prior to rollback. The Delta IV Heavy rocket stands 235 feet tall, or about 23 stories, and weighs about 1.6 million pounds fully fueled. The three engines produce more than 2 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Today's launch is for the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO. This is ULA's 30th launch for the NRO and the 8th use of a Delta IV Heavy for the NRO. The NRO is a joint organization engaged in the research and development, acquisition, launch, and operation of innovative overhead reconnaissance systems necessary to meet the needs of the intelligence community and the Department of Defense. The NRO is recognized for its transformational intelligence collection systems that are used to develop highly accurate military targeting data, support international peacekeeping and humanitarian relief operations, and to assess the impact of natural disasters. As they do for every mission, the NRO provided unique artwork for NRO 44. Here's the story behind the art. The background of this artwork is a dark shade of NRO blue to symbolize cross-organization collaboration required for mission success. In the foreground, we see a wolf howling as a warning to its pack as the first point of detection for signs of trouble. The wolf pack represents the nation and the international community leveraging and supporting the steadfast sentry. Lastly, the falling snow represents the purity of the NRO's intentions and the serene calm of peace. This is the 12th flight of the Delta IV Heavy. Let's take a look back at this impressive rocket. With three booster cores generating more than two million total pounds of thrust off the pad, the imposing Delta IV Heavy rocket is the nation's proven heavy lifter. Add in its high-performing Delta cryogenic second stage, and the Heavy delivers the flexibility and agility for the most demanding missions, like NASA's Parker Solar Probe launched in 2018. Launching from both Cape Canaveral and Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, ULA's Delta IV Heavy has an impressive resume. Liftoff of United oh. Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket carrying the NROL 26 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Carrying the NROL 32 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. And liftoff for the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy carrying the NRO L15 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Yeah. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket carrying the NRO L65 mission the National Reconnaissance Office. That's the loss. At dawn, the dawn of Orion and a new era of American space exploration. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket during the NROL 37 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Liftoff of the mighty Delta IV Heavy Rocket with NASA's Parker Solar Probe. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket with NROL 71. A few moments ago, Mission Director Colonel Chad Davis remembered our friends and colleagues, Chuck Mitchell, Mark Wright, and Winnie Payne. Let's listen in. This evening's NRO L44 launch is dedicated to the memory of Chuck Mitchell and Winnie Payne. 
Chuck and Winnie have dedicated countless hours of technical expertise, ensuring the incredible success of a multitude of launches. Their warm smiles, team spirit, and phenomenal leadership have rippled across the aerospace and launch communities. To our fellow patriots, rest in peace. NROL 44 is also dedicated to memory of ULA employee Mark Wright. Mark spent most of his life on the Space Coast and loved all that it represented. He began his career at Boeing working on multiple space programs before joining the Delta IV team in 2001. As a quality inspector, Mark was instrumental in preparing Slick 37 for its first Delta IV launch in 2002 and helping to ensure mission success at all ULA launch pads. Mark earned the respect of all who knew and worked with him, and he will always be remembered for his unwavering honesty, positive attitude, strong work ethic, big heart, and friendly smile. RLM 918. RLM 918. Elsie concurs. RLM Elsie. T-8 minutes. RLM, go ahead. Disable line item 918. SM Elsie. This all Sam. Place the SRM ignition to enable. SRM ignition enable to enable. GE verify tissue status ready. Roger. Tissue status ready. SYS established best source selector locked on RF and range sources. Roger. Initiate orbital parameter calculations on primary CCLS. Roger. And SYS, did you get your primary balloon cycle task complete? Yes, I reported that complete. Roger. LCR on one. Go. Delta rockets have launched many of the world's vital space assets. Let's take a look at the impressive legacy of the Delta family of rockets. Though first launched in 1960, Delta's story really begins in the mid-1950s with the development of the Thor Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile. Named after the Norse god of thunder, Thor was created in response to a growing fear that the Soviet Union would beat the U.S. in the deployment of a long-range ballistic missile. The goal was to design a system that could deliver a nuclear warhead to a target 2,300 miles away, the distance between the United Kingdom and Moscow. On January 25, 1957, the first Thor lifted off from the newly constructed Space Launch Complex 17 at Cape Canaveral. Following a series of early failures, the Thor team celebrated their first success on September 20, 1957. In all, 59 Thor IRBMs were launched, with the last flight occurring in 1975. Thor began the transition from missile to space launch vehicle in 1958. On October 11, 1958, America's newly formed space agency marked its inaugural launch when Thor Able boosted NASA's Pioneer 1 on a mission to the moon, and NASA's long partnership with Thor was born. NASA and the Douglas Aircraft Company began development of the fourth and longest lasting Thor configuration in April 1959. Using a Thor first stage and a Vanguard second and third stage, Delta I lifted off on May 13, 1960 from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 17. Though its first launch was not successful, the Delta team quickly pinpointed the failure and three months later delivered NASA's Echo-1 communication satellite to orbit. Following Echo-1, the Delta team racked up an impressive 22 successful launches. Led by Bill Schindler, the Delta rocket earned its industry workhorse moniker for rapidly establishing itself as one of the most reliable and versatile launchers. During the 1960s, Delta launch vehicles paved the way for the burgeoning communications industry, launched America's first weather satellites, and sent probes to explore our universe. AT&T's Telstar-1, the first commercial communication satellite, launched in 1962, and in 1963, SYNCOM-2 became the world's first geosynchronous satellite. TIROS, or Television Infrared Observation Satellites, provided the National Weather Service with humans' first view of the Earth's cloud cover. 
In orbit around the Earth, Moon, and Sun, NASA's Explorer satellites provided us with a deeper understanding of the solar wind, cosmic rays, as well as Earth's magnetic field and radiation belts. By the end of the decade, launch vehicle modifications, including the addition of solid rocket motors and an upgraded third stage, made it possible for Delta to orbit satellites 10 times larger. The 1970s was an international decade for Delta, as the manifest included scientific and communication satellites for several countries across North America, Europe, and Asia. Perhaps the most demanding challenge of the 1970s was the launch of the Earth Imaging Earth Resources Technology Satellite, later known as Landsat. The mission for the Earth Sciences community required major changes to the Delta propulsion and guidance systems. During the 1980s, Delta continued its reliable service to the communications, weather, and Earth imaging communities. As capable as the Delta rocket proved to be, production came to a halt in the early 80s, when national space policy dictated that the space shuttle be used as the U.S.'s primary launcher, signaling the end of the expendable launch vehicle. But in 1987, the Delta team picked up where they left off, and development began on a launch vehicle to support the Air Force's global positioning system. On February 14, 1989, Delta 184 began a new chapter in space launch history as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 17, demonstrating an incredible feat. The Delta II had gone from development to launch in just two years. To accommodate the larger GPS satellites, engineers improved the Delta rocket in several ways. The fuel tanks were stretched, a new payload fairing was developed, and larger solid rocket motors were incorporated. The modifications resulted in increased performance and flexibility. By the mid-1990s, the Delta II had delivered the fully operational 24-satellite GPS constellation. And though it was developed for the Air Force, Delta again became a reliable partner to both NASA and its commercial customers. Over the course of its more than 20-year run, the Delta II has launched some of America's best-known scientific and exploration missions. Plus four, three, two, we have main engine start. Zero and liftoff of the Stardust spacecraft. Liftoff of the Delta II rocket carrying the spirit from Earth to planet Mars. Liftoff of the Delta II with Grail. Journey to the center of the moon. On the commercial side, Delta II launched the Global Star and Iridium constellations, which brought satellite telephone communication to the world. Continuing its evolution to meet the growing demands of its satellite customers, the Delta team developed the more powerful Delta III. Though short-lived, the Delta III doubled the performance of the Delta II. An ignition, an ignition and liftoff on the Boeing Delta III rocket. Stage systems looking normal. Engine burners keep burning normally in all six rounds. In partnership with the Air Force's evolved expendable launch vehicle program, the Delta team began development of the next generation Delta rocket in the mid 1990s. And we have liftoff of the first no, Boeing yeah. Delta IV rocket Two. carrying the W 5 telecommunication satellite for Utilsat of France. All Delta IV configurations begin with the common booster core powered by the RS 68A main engine. The Delta IV Heavy, with its three common booster cores, deliver our nation's largest missions to orbit. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket, carrying the NROL-32 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. Delta IV launch vehicles are produced at a 1.5 million square foot state-of-the-art facility in Decatur, Alabama. Processing and launch takes place at Space Launch Complex 37 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Space Launch Complex 6 at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Range safety arm light on. Right. Affirmative. Range ready. Right. Water system ready. From its early beginnings as a weapon and deterrent through its transformation into a space launch vehicle, Delta has reliably supported our nation for more than 60 years. Delta's legacy as a workhorse continues today and is a testament to the persistence, dedication, and commitment of an enterprising team that has continually evolved the Delta rocket to support a changing world. Five, four, three, two, 
one and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy Rocket. Loud and clear. Loud and clear as well. ATD. Loud and clear. Loud and clear as well. Launch on time verified. Roger. LC switched to the ready position. All steps are complete prior to the status check. This is Delta Mission Control. We have entered the planned 10-minute built-in hold, and preparations for launch continue. In a few moments, launch conductor Scott Barney will pull the launch team for the final go to pick up the count. 27 engineers and managers are pulled for system status and readiness to proceed. This is the final status check before launch for all Delta vehicle systems, ground systems, the spacecraft, and the U.S. Space Force Eastern Range. The vehicle system readiness poll includes electrical systems, hydraulics, pneumatics, propulsion systems, flight control, and propellants. Let's listen in as Scott Barney performs the final polling of the launch team. Status check to proceed with terminal count, first stage systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Box. Go. LH2. Go. Second stage system locks. Go. LH2. Go. Electrical systems airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Com. Go. GCQ. Go. Operation support. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Umbilicals. Go. Asgas. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch director. Launch vehicles ready to launch. Oh, minus mission, six minutes. Mission director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. MEQ, establish swing arm, lock pins pulled. Active. Polling is complete, and the launch team has given the go for launch. The countdown will resume approximately two minutes from now, but before it does, let's walk through the final checks we'll hear from the launch team. At T-minus four minutes, and counting, the team will enter the terminal count and begin securing the second stage liquid oxygen tank. At T minus 3 minutes 32 seconds, booster liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen tank securing is started, which includes closing the propellant fill and drain valves. Also at T minus 3 minutes 32 seconds, vehicle transfer from ground facility power to its own internal battery power will be complete. At T minus 3 minutes, the vehicle ordnance system is armed and booster liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellant tanks are verified to be at flight pressure and flight level. Two minutes prior to liftoff, the team will verify that the hydraulic system is pressurized as well as confirm booster, second stage, and flight termination system battery voltages. At T-120, the team will begin securing the second stage liquid hydrogen tank. At T-60 seconds, the eastern range readiness is verified. At T-50 seconds, the second stage liquid hydrogen tank is secured at flight level. A final launch vehicle and spacecraft status check is conducted at T-30 seconds. At T-15 seconds, the ROFIs, or sparklers, are ignited to burn off excess hydrogen at the base of the vehicle. At T minus seven seconds, the starboard engine ignites, followed by the core and port engines. Liftoff will occur at T zero. After liftoff, you'll hear the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle ascent data. Control at T minus four minutes and holding. We anticipate releasing the hold in just a few moments.
T-minus four minutes and counting. The countdown clock has resumed. We've entered the terminal count and are go for launch at 8.09 p.m. Eastern. Ground pyro is enabled. Three twenty-five. Second stage lock secure at flight level. Three oh seven. T minus two minutes forty nine seconds. FTS internal. CBC locks at flight pressure and flight level. CBC LH2 at flight pressure and flight level. With that call, the first stage tanks are now ready for flight. T minus two minutes, 159. Vehicle internal. Hydraulic pressure at 4,000. 155. Launch sequence or start. One forty. FCS launch enable. One thirty seven. T minus ninety seconds. FCSR. The launch vehicle, payload, ground systems, and eastern range are go for launch. One twenty. FCS count started. OCUs armed. Minus one minute. Engine start box go. Rock, report range status. Range green. Fifty seconds. Second stage LH2 secure at flight level. 30 seconds. Status check. Go Delta. Go NROL 44. Fifteen seconds. Roll for ignition. T minus ten. ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Main engine ignition. Three. Two. One. Zero and liftoff. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket carrying the NRL 44 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. On all three RCKA engines look good in the full press mode. Now 15 seconds into flight, vehicles begun to pitch over maneuver. Body range response is good. You are hearing the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle assets data. 25 seconds into flight, engine operating parameters continue to look good, body rate responses look good. Now 30 seconds in. Standing by for four booster throttle down momentarily. And core booster has begun throttling down as expected. The partial thrust level engine response looks good. Core booster has achieved partial thrust level as expected. Now 50 seconds into flight. Operating parameters continue to look good on all three engines. Now passing one minute into 
flight. Delta IV is now 4.3 miles in altitude, 5.8 miles downrange distance, traveling at 1,200 miles per hour. And at 1 minute 20 seconds into flight, vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is also passing Mach 1, Delta IV is now supersonic. Engine operating parameters continue to look good on all three boosters, port and starboard booster in the full thrust mode, core booster in the partial thrust mode. Body rates continue to look stable throughout the boost phase of flight. Telemetry quality has looked good throughout the boost phase. Now passing one minute, 46 seconds into flight. And the second stage reaction control system is pressurizing to flight levels. System response looks good. Engine operating parameters on all three engines continue to look good. Body rates continue to look stable. Vehicle has now gone to closed loop guidance. Seeing some correction in uh, the attitude as expected when vehicle switches over to closed loop guidance. Now two minutes, 37 seconds into flight, approximately three minutes remaining in boost phase of flight. And the Delta IV rocket now weighs just one half of what it did at liftoff, burning propellant at a rate of almost 5,000 pounds per second. Body rates in roll pitch and yaw have nulled out nicely now after the closed loop guidance switchover. And vehicle is now passing Mach 5. Engine operating parameters continue to look good. Port and starboard boosters in the full thrust mode, core booster in the partial thrust mode. Vehicle body rates have damped out nicely now as the vehicle is continuing in the latter part of the boost phase. Approximately 30 seconds now remaining until port and starboard booster engines cut off. and approximately two minutes now remaining in the boost phase of flight. And standing by for strap-on engines to throttle down. And strap-on engines have begun throttling down in preparation for engine cutoff. And port and starboard booster engines have cut off. And we've seen good indication of separation of the port and starboard boosters. Core booster is throttled back up to full thrust as expected. Uh, engine response looks good. Now four minutes, 20 seconds into flight. And the upper stage liquid oxygen system has begun boost phase chill down sequence to begin thermal conditioning of the RL10 engine. And approximately one minute now remaining until BECO. And upper stage fuel system has now begun boost phase chill down. Core engine continuing to look good in the full thrust mode. Engine operating parameters look nominal. Now passing five minutes into flight. And the Delta IV is now 71 miles in altitude, 360 miles downrange distance, traveling at 12,900 miles per hour. And approximately 10 seconds until core booster throttle down. And core booster has begun throttling down in preparation for BECO, standing by for BECO. And we have BECO booster engine cutoff, standing by for stage separation. And we have good indication of separation of the first and second stages. Nozzle extension on the RL-10 is deploying. We have pre-start. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. 
Chamber pressure on the RL10 looks good. Body rate responses look good on the DCSS. Now passing 6 minutes, 15 seconds into flight, engine operating parameters continue to look good on the RL-10. Uh, upper stage has begun initial thruster firings to, being, to begin catalyst bed warming, seeing a couple of periodic dropouts in telemetry. And we have seen good indication of payload fairing jettison. As you just heard minutes, with that call for payload fairing jettison, that will wrap up this evening's live coverage of the broadcast. ULA's Delta IV Heavy made history this year when it became the first operational rocket to host 3D projection mapping. Let's take a look at the footage from this unique event. I'm Tori Bruno, President and CEO of United Launch Alliance. You are about to see the first ever 3D animated projection on an operational rocket. And of course, we have chosen the majestic Delta IV Space Launch Vehicle for this experience. So enjoy the show and God bless America. We are dreamers, inspired by possibilities not yet imagined. Believers driven to harness the potential of space. Leaders combining expertise and ingenuity. And it all started with a spark of the imagination. Go. Go. ESC. Go. Timer. Go. ECS. Go. QE. Go. USO. Go. OSM. Go. BSE. VSC is go. ALC. Go. AC. AC is go. RC. Clear to proceed. Launch director. The launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission director. You have permission to launch. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. And main engine ignition. Two, one, and lift off. Lift off of the United Launch Alliance Delta Heavy. Although ULA's focus is on the future, we will always celebrate our incredible legacy. 140 missions, 140 successes, enabling our customers to save lives, explore the universe, and connect the world. From John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth, to new ways of connecting the world. From the most accurate weather satellites ever deployed. Mandatory evacuation for Central Florida. To game-changing national security satellites. and launching missions throughout the solar system and beyond.
to once again sending astronauts to space from U.S. soil. And doubling down on our commitment to our country. America has always and will always be at the forefront of space. This mission is no different. As we prepare to launch another critical asset to protect our way of life. The National Reconnaissance Office. When our country needs eyes and ears from the high ground of space, to give advanced warning to threats. To aid in the aftermath of natural disasters. intelligence questions. It turns to the National Reconnaissance Office. The leader in National Space Intelligence Systems. Over the next decade, ULA will continue to protect life on Earth with the introduction of the Vulcan Centaur. Our next generation rocket, a rocket purpose built for national security. Founded on the Atlas and Delta legacy of success, With Vulcan Centaur, we are engineering limitless possibilities for a safer, more secure existence at home and in space. We are dreamers inspired by possibilities not yet imagined. Believers driven to broaden horizons, we deliver progress above. This is Delta Mission Control at T plus 14 minutes, 40 seconds. I hope you enjoyed the shows, the 3D video projection, and the successful liftoff of the Delta IV Heavy rocket carrying the NROL-44 mission. Liftoff occurred at 8.09 p.m. Eastern Time. At our customer's request, we'll now terminate our live coverage. I'd like to thank Patrick Moore for his participation in this evening's broadcast. For more information, follow us on Facebook or Twitter or our blog at ULALaunch.com. We'll leave you now with another look at the liftoff of the Delta IV Heavy rocket this evening. I'm Dylan Rice, and on behalf of the entire launch team, thank you for joining us, and have a great evening. Eight, seven, six, five, main engine ignition, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. Liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Delta IV Heavy rocket carrying the NRL 44 mission for the National Reconnaissance Office. on all three R68A engines look good in the full thrust mode. Now 15 seconds into flight, vehicles begun to pitch over maneuver. Body rate responses look good. You are hearing the voice of Patrick Moore providing launch vehicle ascent data. 25 seconds into flight, engine operating parameters continue to look good. Body rate responses look good. Now 30 seconds in. Standing by for core booster throttle down momentarily. <laughs>